my channel has mainly been an excuse for me to tick off games from the backlog that I've never got round to, and it's gradually morphed into reviewing all the Resident Evil games that I failed to check out when they were first released. Following in the footsteps of Code Veronica, Resident Evil Zero and Revelations 1, Revelations 2 is the final Resident Evil game that I've never played before. Now if you're anticipating some nuanced critique from somebody that's played the game hundreds of times before, you're in the wrong place. Still here? Well, this review I'll be aiming to inform you on my experience playing it for the first time, my thoughts and opinions as a veteran of the series, how it compares to its predecessor, and ultimately, if it holds up in 2021. And let's dive in. Resident Evil Revelations 2 was first released in February of 2015 by developer Capcom, and is the first and only time that Resi took an episodic release. Now if you cast your mind back to this time frame, episodic games were all the rage with Telltale ruling the roost with The Walking Dead and developers like Don't Nod making a name for themselves with the newly released Life is Strange. The benefit to an episodic games release is twofold. First, it gives the dev team opportunity to tweak and improve gameplay dependent on player feedback across the game's release schedule. And probably the most important of the two, it gives the game more time in the spotlight with each episode gaining a new round in the media, with reviews and previews gaining coverage to boost sales. The downside to this method is you need each individual section to pop with the audience to avoid people dropping off, and this is especially true for the opening segment. It also doesn't help that most players prefer being able to consume the game at their own pace and not have this dictated to them with a release schedule. So bearing this in mind, did the game gain any advantage releasing in this way? The short answer is no. Now I was really surprised in researching this that Revelations 2 released each chapter weekly, meaning they can't possibly change anything meaningful to the game if players raise concerns. And more than anything, this was just a marketing tactic, as the whole game was obviously finished and then cut up to try and stay in the public consciousness, which in looking at its total sales figures of 2.6 million, didn't really pay off. I mean, Operation Raccoon City sold more. Now I'm lucky in that coming to this as a complete project years after its launch meant I could lose myself in the game and not have to worry about waiting week to week to get the next slice. I can imagine that being insanely annoying contemporary to its release. Well, getting the history out of the way, let's get into the plot. And don't worry, I'll ensure to not ruin the game for anyone. Revelations 2 kicks off in the scariest setting possible, the office party. Now fortunately, it's early in the night, and so Big Boss Dave hasn't got trashed, offered you cocaine in the toilet, and started leching on all the interns. Instead, we find Claire Redfield and newbie Moira Burton caught in the middle of a terrorist attack, getting kidnapped and taken to a remote island where they'll be experimented on. Sounds like they got off lightly. What follows is different from your typical Resident Evil story. The game is split into two separate stories, which you switch between one act at a time. And the good thing is, they really complement each other throughout, adding intrigue which never really fades from the start to credits. Claire and Moira wake up to find themselves trapped on an island filled with crazy inhabitants, strange bracelets on their arms, and I'm sure a, not this shit again, flashback for Claire who always seems to find herself stuck on islands which have gone to hell. The bracelets track their vitals and put them in direct connection to the nefarious Overseer, a character whose plan slowly unfolds throughout the course of the game and has real ties to the wider lore which I really appreciated. Claire and Moira persevere through increasingly bleak situations in an attempt to escape the island and ultimately take down the Overseer once and for all. For the other half of the story, set some six months later, you join as fan favourite Big Bad Barry Burton, the proof that even gingers can be cool. He's joined by a little girl, Natalia, who has somehow managed to survive the horrors on the island for all this time, and agrees to join Barry on his quest to find Moira, his daughter. There's all the usual things you'd expect in a Resident Evil story, corporations that get top talent from across the globe to create a revolutionary bioweapon and then use those staff as experiments to test the virus. Now I'm not in charge of a massive organisation with near limitless resources, 
but it's probably not a good idea to kill all your staff. Sure, you save on wages and holiday pay, but destroying your entire production line sure is going to make manufacturing slow. And without R&D, how are you going to release the diet version in a few months before then coming back with Classic and making a killing? But hey, who am I to judge how they run their business? But in all seriousness, even with the tropes the series has, it does manage to weave a personal story with Moira and Barry, which I thought worked brilliantly. The way the two stories intersect across its locations is always fun and interesting. Seeing the unintentional barriers Claire and Moira put in Barry's way really flesh the stages out, expanding the scope, and I feel this retroactively improves the game as you play, adding a depth which otherwise would be lost. Overall, the plot worked really well for me. It has a lot of what you expect, but telling the story in this fractured way elevated the experience and really made it stand out from a lot of its bigger, numbered titles. Revelations 2 is like Capcom somehow travelled forward in time, found my Revelations 1 review, and then went back and made the second entry. Everything I complained about in its predecessor has been improved and alleviated here. The weapon mod system is back, but this time it strikes that balance of improving the experience by giving a reward to thorough exploration, but not turning your guns into death machines. It gives you small improvements which are noticeable, but never go too far. I suppose you could make the argument it makes itself more additive than essential, but if that's the trade-off, I'll take that in a heartbeat. Exploration has also been greatly improved. The scanner from Revelations 1 has been completely axed, and I couldn't be more thankful for this design decision. In Revelations 2, exploration is linked to character swapping. Now let's get into this. At all times, you are playing as two characters, which you can swap between with the press of triangle. They went back to a similar system as Resi Zero, but instead put the characters into categories, combat and support. Your combat characters are clear and barry, they hold all your guns, grenades and are used to deal with the enemies you encounter from the start to the end. Moira and Natalia are there for support. I use them to hold all my crafting materials, weapon mods, heals, etc. However, they do serve their own purposes. Using these characters for exploration means they can identify hidden items in the environment, usually crafting materials or ammo. The exploration with these characters doesn't feel as forced as the scanner did in the original, and for me, it meant I played 90% of the game with the support characters before changing back to Clear and Barry to deal with whatever enemies I'd encountered. Now that's not to say that the support characters are useless in combat, Moira has a flashlight she can stun enemies with, for Claire to run in with a devastating melee attack, whereas Natalia is able to sense the enemies in the environment, which opens up stealth takedowns for Barry, as well as enabling you to slip right past enemies to preserve precious ammo. Did I just say stealth takedowns in Resident Evil? Yes. Yes, I did. It's really strange to have this mechanic in a Resident Evil game, but I really enjoyed the act of sneaking around the environment and taking out enemies without having to use any ammo. Having this inclusion to sense enemies and get the drop on them in Barry's half of the game gave it a completely different feel to Claire's. It dialed down the terror and gave you a sense of control. If this was present throughout the entire game and impacted on Claire's half, I'd say that this is a failure. But having this only be for Barry gave the impression that he's a prepared veteran the enemies never felt too much for him. Now this is further evidenced by his starting arsenal of a magnum, pistol and assault rifle, compared to Claire's pistol only start. This difference with the support characters fundamentally changes how the game is approached, and for me, having this clear distinction enabled the devs to have fun with enemy numbers and environment design, to be able to have the horror and moment to moment tension with Claire, and then still have a more modern action style with Barry and this really worked for me. Now to further deepen the systems at play here, we also have a point system, which you accumulate for completing specific in-game challenges, or completing a stage with an S rank, which you get for limited deaths and a quick completion time. They unlock character skills, like having Moira's flashlight stun enemies quicker, or giving Claire a follow-up attack, which enables you to chain both characters' melees together to take enemies down quick without the need to use ammunition. To me, this simply encourages replayability. 
and doesn't hurt the base experience. Now you don't know what the challenges across a given level are until you've completed it, so it doesn't interrupt your initial playthrough, and the skills that you do unlock are useful but not game breaking, stopping you from cheesing through the game. Apart from encouraging replays of the game, the skills open up strategies for different enemy types. In terms of combat, gunplay is the same as Revelations 1, feeling great and impactful. The dodge command is back, however I didn't feel it as effective or as satisfying as its predecessor. You don't have to time a dodge as perfectly as you did in number 1, and therefore the act of pulling off a successful evade is nowhere near as satisfying. It also feels like enemies weren't designed to really push this technique to the forefront like they were in number 1, and this for me is a missed opportunity. It's serviceable, but not standout. The only major gripe for the entire game for me is the lack of puzzles. Resident Evil Zero made excellent use of its dual character setup by working them deep into the numerous puzzles found across the game. They all worked brilliantly and created an extra layer of depth, Now, in Revelations 2 it's like they forgot about puzzle inclusion entirely, only really including it in Chapter 3. Now when they did remember in this chapter, it's good, but nowhere near the heights of Zero, lacking the complexity and nuance that makes you stare blankly before that light bulb moment that Zero really nailed. I think it's quite telling on their impact. There's four chapters for the game, and Act 3 is easily the high point, as it feels like a full experience. Overall, for me, the improvements they've made by straddling this strange line, fusing Resident Evil Zero, Six, and Revelations together to create this unique feeling experience is a success, even if I wish it did have more of the series puzzle solving routes present. Revelations 2 follows the same format of its predecessor, with title screens at the start and end of all its chapters. With the context this was released in parts over a four week period, it does make sense why they'd include it. I don't think they really add any value to the game itself, but it is an interesting way to keep a shared identity across the Revelation series. For me, playing this as a complete package, their inclusion is pointless, but at the same time I can see this being an easy way to fuel potential content for gaming websites and YouTube to keep the hype flowing week to week. And at least it makes sense bearing in mind the release schedule compared to Revelations 1 which included these same title screens, but releases a full game back on the 3DS. The enemy design is decent. I wouldn't say any of the creatures you encounter are particularly memorable, and there is a lack of variety throughout the game. All told, there's 12 different enemies, excluding bosses, but they all seem to blend together. Only one seems to really have their own identity, which is the Glasps, invisible enemies you mostly encounter in Barry's campaign. They are creepy to begin with, having to frantically change between Natalia's viewpoint to pinpoint their location, and then switch to Barry to try and fight them. But by the time you've encountered your fifth one, the charm fades, and they become more annoying than anything else. The remainder of enemies lack a distinctive moveset or appearance to really make them stand out. Now it's an improvement over Revelations 1, which literally didn't make any effort with its designs at all, but it's certainly not on the level of its numbered entries. Character is where this game stands out compared to Revelations 1. Claire, Moira, Barry and Natalia are all voiced brilliantly. I enjoyed experiencing the game with these characters and each of their personalities are complemented by their partner. Barry leans hard into the father role, with Natalia really bringing out his caring character trait, while Claire shows a more mature, composed persona, in contrast to Moira's rough round the edges, newbie traits. Revelations 1 featured characters like Parker, Raymond and Jessica, which ultimately, in looking back on the game, aren't really very memorable and didn't add any opportunity for character growth compared to Revelations 2, with Moira in particular going through a nice arc by the time the credits rolled. The Overseer has that classic Resident Evil bad guy performance of over the top monologues that you should expect from the series, and it works well enough to carry the plot and pose as an intriguing villain, I really can't fault any of it. Graphically, Revelations 2 doesn't stand out. Everything looks flat, especially when you compare it to Resident Evil 6 which released 3 years prior. And at parts, including some of the character models, Revelations 1 looks the superior game, 
Now it's worth bearing in mind that this game released at a budget price of $25, but it's still a shame that the graphics are such a step back. It does look like a PS3 game, and not a great one. It's evident the limited budget the devs had to work with is the sole culprit for the lack of enemy diversity and overall lacklustre graphics found across the entire game. Music wise, Revelations 2 features tons of music throughout the course of the game, and each track is effective in ratcheting up the atmosphere, making each location feel unique. There's nothing overly memorable here, but it does its intended job. Revelations 2 really surprised me. I expected to be in for a similar experience as its predecessor, but what I got was a game which exceeds it in almost every way. The character dynamics are excellent, with each team having their own unique feel. The gameplay styles which naturally develop over the course of the game are all enjoyable, from stealth takedowns to over the top action, all the while reinforcing the limited ammo and horror routes the series forgot after Resident Evil 4. It feels like a true return to the series and for me, achieves the goal Revelations 1 set out to do, to bring old and modern style Resident Evil fans on a trip, where each camp will get the experience they want from Resident Evil. The game is far from perfect, lacking the puzzles so integral to a Resident Evil game, and a presentation which is decent, but certainly not up to the series standard. But even with these critiques, the game exceeds its budget moniker and crafts an experience unique to itself that puts it up there with some of my favourites in the series. If you enjoyed the review, let me know by putting a like on the video, put a comment below about your thoughts on the game, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. All the Resident Evil titles I've never played are out of the way, and I'm excited now to revisit the mainline series on the run up to RE Village, starting with Resident Evil 1 Remake. So I'll look forward to seeing you back here soon. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. See ya.